So, uh, Sini already had a presentation about Oscari that uh, uh, was more from the end user perspective, and I'm trying to have something more technical here. Um, so, what we've been up to last year or so. A uh, bit of history, I won't repeat everything that Sini said, but uh, Oscari was born from the National Geo Portal of Finland. Uh, a decision was made to open source it. Uh, of course, uh, it's not enough to just open source something to, for it to be usable by people or reusable by others. Uh, and during all these years, we made it uh, more from Oscari being the national geo portal to the national geo portal being powered by Oscari. Uh, so it can be used to implement all sort of, sorts of uh, web mapping sites, really. And we've had even had some contributions to, to the source code, so that's profit. <laughs> uh, here's the National Geoport of Finland. It uh, looks a bit more crowded on the left side menu uh, since it has all the admin functionalities there as well. But this is the way it looks today if you're logged in as an admin. Uh, Os so, Oscar is, uh, is uh, the server side, is Java code, built with Maven. The front end is uh, obviously JavaScript. Uh, we use Webpack to build it. Uh, for the database, we're using Postgres. Uh, you could probably use something else as well. It, we don't really use all, that, all those uh, possibilities that Postgres is providing, like you could use some other database as well. But if you want to have the user-generated data on, on, on your Oscar install, you will need PostGIS, so that's why Postgres is, well, we re re recommend it. Uh, for caching and communications, if you have a like number of servers in a clustered environment, we use Redis for, for that kind of clustered communication and also for caching. And then, of course, uh, uh, we don't really, the whole purpose for the National Geo Portal was not that we dump all the data there, but use it from the spatial data infrastructure, so from other data providers. So that's, that's the other missing ingredient from the code. Um, so yeah, um, working from having just one web application that gets you the National Geo Portal of Finland, we move to having kind of a application com components. So those are building blocks for building your own web mapping software. And uh, since we ourselves are already maintaining a number of Oscar instances that look different, they have different functionalities, uh, we really need to needed to work on the APIs and have extension points for all the different differences between these uh, uh, softwares and and provide hooks for everything and stuff like that. But uh, most of the code is well, all of our code is in GitHub. Really, uh, we have a. organization in uh, GitHub called Oscari Org uh, that has this Oscari server repository that has all, most of the server side code. The Oscari frontend has, well, the frontend code. Uh, we also have this Oscari frontend contribu um, like a community repository where you can have a bunch of, uh, uh, well, extensions to Oscari that we don't have on the national geo portal that are are not that uh, maintained in the same pace as the like the core functionalities that are in the main repository. And then we have these sample server and sample application repositories that are basically templates which show you how you can use Oscar to create your own application, how to initialize the data and uh, the functionalities you want to use on your software and stuff like that.
and it's an easy way to uh, document what you need to do when you upgrade uh, to a newer version of Oscari. You can just take a look at those uh, template repositories and see what has changed on the application. So last year we had two main uh, releases with five patches. Um, we most of our time has gone working on mobile support for the GeoPortal. So you can uh, publish maps that you can embed to other pages from Oscari. Those have been already like mobile friendly from the start, but the GeoPortal side was not, not that great uh, for mobile usage. So that's kind of the main thing. Uh, we've worked much on improving theming and customization. Uh, we are combining different types of user generated content. We worked a lot on uh, generating this uh, new documentation. Uh, I have a old black uh, slides before, now they're all white. I'm, I'm not sure if I like it, but I'm more of a black person, but it's a new look. Okay, so mobile support. Uh, uh, for the server side, you can configure things to be left out for mobile users. So you don't really want to give every possible option that you can offer for desktop for the mobile users. This is something, a uh, simple way of dropping some functionalities for, for um, oops, for desktop or mobile. For example, in here, we want to drop the user guide for desktop and for mobile users, we'll add another type of user guide that only guides the user for the functionalities that are av available on the mobile. So when you drop some of the functionalities, it looks like this. Not that much on the, on the menu, but we have a new button here that you can toggle the menu and gain access to the functionalities that we are previously on the, on the left-hand menu. Uh, so what we can do, uh, we modify the software uh, based on the screen size, so the navigation is, uh, you can toggle it, so it's easier to see. Uh, the map, before it was just uh, on a mobile phone, you mostly saw the menu, not the map. That wasn't that great for mobile users. Uh, most of the user interface, when you click uh, some functionality, open some functionality and start using it, it opens on a kind of a window on top of the map. So for mobile users, that, that fills the screen. So it's more usable for, for mobile. It just takes all the screen space that's available to show the better UI for, for mobile users. And in general, elements and layout flows and will interact better. Uh, then based on the device capabilities, we can drop some of the ho hover-based functionalities, like uh, if you want to show coordinates where the mouse uh, control or cursor is currently located, that's not really usable on, on mobile. Or if you have a, we have a tool that you can draw a box on the map and the map is tuned to that, we can drop that for mobile since, since people usually pinch zoom it. But the problem with uh, pinch zooming is when you pinch zoom something that's not on the map, you can actually uh, get rid of all the UI elements but the map on the screen. So when you try to pinch zoom back the, all the functionalities, uh, you can't do that because it's zooming the map. And we have a kind of proof of concept for detecting this kind of um, use case and for resetting the screen, screen zoom so, so the user can get back to the menus as well. Uh, so here's a quick example for, for how the, like the banner is, you have this main message here, the like a boilerplate stuff on the 
right hand, and then on the mobile screen, it uh, moves to the, well, these two don't show me again, and, and the paging and stuff are like two columns, and here they are on the same row, but the actual announcement or message that we want to show is, has more space to show on the screen. And here's an example for, we can just, on desktop you have this show mouse cursor on the coordinates tool, for mobile it's dropped. Uh, so for tools for developers, um, well, if you're using our component library, you get most of these things for free. It's easier to build your application since we are you. Uh, we also already have the framework how to how to uh, handle the mobile and desktop modes, kind of, and switch between them. You have some tools. If, for example, when you want to add a marker on the screen, uh, that's. For desktop, you, it's on the left-hand menu. When you click it, you need to click on the map. On desktop, you always see that uh, tool available there, and you have a bunch of screen for the map, but when, when you activate it on mobile, you really need to get rid of the navigation to get more of the map on the, on the screen. So that's, that's just one small thing, but, but something that needs to be done. And, you have tools for it. Uh, when implementing something, if, if you want to see if the user is on, on a mobile device or if he has a mount, mouse uh, doing something like that, it's, it's really easy. So, yep. Um, more of the UI rewrite. So we, are, uh, we have been using jQuery for a while and been moving or migrating towards React JS for a while as well. So one of the big things that uh, we've done done this year or last year was was the thematic maps or statistical data display. This is all now in React, written in React. Uh, previously on jQuery, that's a very big functionality that took a lot of time. Uh, another one is the metadata shorts, so you can search uh, things on, on a geo network, basically or CSV um, service. Uh, permissions for admin, so if you want to, you are not uh, maintaining a single layer, but want to check all the permissions for all the layers, this is some, uh, a different type of admin functionality that that we have also rewritten in React. And on the admin tool, there's some this uh, cool functionality that Cine mentioned, I think, but uh, if you have vector data, a layer that has vector data, we now have this uh, cool UI that you can, you don't need to write JSON to configure this stuff. I know some brave Brave users have, have done this, or admins, but it, it's terrible. <laughs> so now we have a UI to generate that JSON for you. And from user or developer perspective, it's, it's uh, we now can advertise that we can do these types of things. Uh, and uh, end users or admin users can, can uh, request this kind of features to be added added on their, or to Oscari, so they can use it on their Oscari-based services more easily. So uh, for vector data, you can select the properties that you want to show to user, uh, relabel them, uh, localize uh, labeling, so if the user is using whatever language, you can get a, like a localized label for it. Uh, and the formatting stuff, you can select how you want to show the value of that, that uh, vector data, the properties of it. Uh, so here's an example where that hasn't been done. These are kind of non-user friendly names for the properties. 
but this is showing uh, vector data that for all of these features, you have it on, a, on the, uh, like an object data, data uh, table. Yeah, moving on. So for the user-generated content, we have three types of uh, user-generated content at the moment. One is when users draw on the map to create these uh, or modify the features. They have fixed properties, they are editable. Another type is imported. Um, you get the properties that's on the vector data that you import, but you can't edit that later. And then as a result of a analysis, uh, where the features get, well, they inherit the source layer, so, so there's that. And these are all done uh, or saved separately, and we want to change that. We've been using GeoServer to, uh, to provide all of these in WVFs, VFS, uh, and now we have changed started working on migrating these or combining these, and we have actually dropped GeoServer to make it more easier to do, and just do direct DB queries for them. So that's where we are today, which also means uh, less maintenance on the servers. When you update uh, Oscar, you don't need to update GeoServer one less thing to worry about. Uh, next thing, next steps are, do we want, we want to migrate these contents to the same format, like uh, same table structure and everything else, have it as a single source for everything user generated. And of course we need to combine the front end changes. Um, yeah, well quick word of teaming. It's improved. Um, yep, just moving along. <laughs> so the documentation, that's, uh, it's not up yet on oscari.org, uh, but we have everything we have for it now in these two repositories. So the documentation has the, well, documentation, and the one with the site has the, it's a Node.js, uh, application that serves the content. So you can take a look if you want to and set it up on your own, own machine. Uh, it's coming up later, or we are launching it later this year. I think I'm mostly out of time, but one last thing is this RPC documentation that we have. So RPC API is the way to uh, control, programmatically control an, an embedded map, so if you have embedded a map published from Oscari to another page, you can then communicate uh, with the, your page and the map and it, make it interactive, like react to user zooming the map and um, allow the user to add features or stuff like that. So what's cool, we now have an like a online editor for these examples. So it's really easy to tinker around and try different uh, parameters for, for using this RPC API. So that's really nice. Um, yeah, bunch of dependency updates. Uh, we had some library changes from on the front end, the testing side and on the server side, the database connection pool library. Those were updated. Uh, I think I'm pretty much out of time, so I won't go into that. But yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sammy, that was perfectly in time. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Thank you for the great presentation. I was wondering if there are any kind of specific contributions you are hoping from the community. Well, <laughs> one big thing that we have in front of us is uh, actually migrating to a newer Java version. So that's, that's uh, 
really something that... <laughs> yep. We'd like to have some, some help with that, but... Yeah. And of course, working with the uh, user-generated content, those migrations, it's a lot of work. Other questions? Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, this might be a bit of a noob question, I reckon, but I was wondering what's the motivation behind having the server and the front end in different repositories? Well, it's nice that GitHub recognizes one as JavaScript and one as Java. <laughs> I know it's a bunch of repositories, but um, for example, separating the actual core code from the templates for the applications makes so much sense thinking about it now since uh, what we saw earlier that uh, when people wanted to make changes to Oscar, they forked the repositories for the core code and they didn't contribute back and applications started dividing to a different forks that were no longer maintainable or you couldn't easily update it. It's now much more contained that you you just uh, add your customizations on the actual application code and not have to fork everything in Oscari to make any changes. There's still time for questions. Any more questions? And I'll have one. So how do you deal with uh, uh, um, interaction with the, the users for improving uh, the, the interfaces and the interactions? Is there some formal uh, way you have a, a pool of testers or uh, they just leave comments? Yeah, I think people mainly leave comments for Paikatieto Ikkuna. And well, we have this uh, Gitter that people can ask questions about whatever they, it's more of a technical channel. Mm -hmm. So that's one, one way of asking. We also have a mailing list. It's pretty uh, low traffic. It's most, mostly me announcing news <laughs> versions and what the release notes are for those versions. But yeah, uh, everyone is free to add, add their contribution by just you know, like, well, you can always add uh, issues on, on the GitHub repository. So that's one way of like telling this is something that we would like to see in Oscar in future and maybe people can then contribute towards it, even if it's not us. Okay. More questions? And Oscar means otter or what? <laughs> it's a uh, open source map window in Finnish. It's Open source karta ikkuna. Okay, I thought maybe it was a relation with the the mascot uh, that you. Uh, well, yeah, with the, the, it kind of became our mascot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If there are no more questions, I would like to thank Sami for the nice presentation. Yeah. Thank you.